Hi guys, I'm Shmi, and today is kind of one of those days where I have to pinch myself to work out if what is about to happen is actually real. Because in my hand, I have a Bugatti key, and this is the key to that car right there, the new Chiron. And today I'm going to be able to go for a first drive in this car and see what the ultimate in super sports cars is really like. This is such an iconic and benchmark hypercar of this current time. And well, we're going to go for a little drive with it with Andy Wallace, former Le Mans winner and Bugatti test driver, who's going to talk us around the car, what it's like, what it's about, before I get an opportunity to jump behind the wheel of a 1,500 PS, 1,600 Newton meter, 8 litre quad turbo W16 incredible machine it's hard to even come up with words for this car it is a sort of complete feat of engineering it is incredibly special it is going to be a legend in the future it is the successor to an icon in its own right the bugatti veyron that has really set the standards in recent times and it has a top speed of 420 kilometers per hour that's 261 miles an hour and today I still can't really believe I'm saying this, but I'm going to get an opportunity to jump behind the wheel and see what this is like. So first, let's check out the Bugatti Chiron. So then, to take a look around the Chiron, I am joined by Andy. How are you? Doing great, thanks. Well, it's a lovely day, and there is a very nice car right behind us. It's a beautiful day for going for a ride in the Chiron. Sounds like it to me. And Andy is the man who does demonstration drives with customers, with journalists, and you have quite a few kilometers under your belt in Chirons. I've never really counted it, but I know it's more than 40,000 k's. 40,000 kilometers driving it. So safe to say, you probably know quite a bit about it. Well, I never think you know everything, but I do, um, I'm quite familiar with the car now. Probably still a lot more to learn, but it looks like you're still smiling. Every time I get in the car, it puts a grin on my face. Even if you're not having a fantastic day, yeah. you go down the road and a couple of seconds later, it's the best day of your life again. <laughs> I can imagine. Well, let's head in and take a look around it and talk about the car. Go for a little walk around and talk about some of the sort of details and, and features. And obviously, it's not just a facelifted Veyron, it's so much more than that. Um, it's still coupe based on W16, but it's fundamentally very different. Yes, and if you come at it from the back, the first thing you notice is the sawn off back, which is very distinctive. 400% um, of the area, air extraction area, for removing hot air from the engine bay. Mm -hmm. That's the first thing you see. Then you've got this light bar, which is made from a solid block of aluminium, 1.8 metres wide. Okay. Um, one of my favourite things about any car is the engine. and. You this know, is quite a special engine. <laughs> well, you know, it's, it's half a litre per cylinder, um, which, is a, which is a normal size, so 16 okay. cylinders and 8 litres. Of course, it's 1,500 horsepower, everybody knows that. Um, but, of course, when you go to bigger turbochargers, and these are significantly bigger, to get that power, you end up with a situation where you can have quite a lot of lag. So very okay. cleverly and very simply, what we've done is we've now got two-stage turbocharging. So at low okay. RPM you blow eight cylinders through one turbocharger on each side, and that has the effect of making the turbocharger half the size, because normally you'd have four exhausts going through one turbo. As soon as the RPM gets to 3.8, you open the second set, and then you've got all four working. Okay. The boost is the same at all times, um, 2.85 bar, uh, and you don't feel this step between two and four turbochargers. It's done so nicely. If you, if you really listen, you can hear a little tiny tick as the valve opens, <laughs> but it's just a solid slug of torque from 2,000 to 6,000, it's 1,600 newton meters. That is yeah. massive. That's a big number. That's a very big number. Hence, all the cooling required around the rear. Yeah, and we have to overdo everything. So we've overdone the cooling. So, you know, if you're at 50 degrees ambient in a hot country somewhere and you're idling in traffic or you're going down the autobahn it's the same the car stays completely under control temperature wise what surprises me and most times you look down on the temperature gauges the oil mm -hmm. is the same temperature as the water if not sometimes oh, really? even cooler so okay it's, it's very well under control and 
while we're here, one of the sort of most standout features is obviously the rear wing, uh, new rear wing versus before. Yep, and the big thing with this rear wing, it's now almost the entire width of the car. And so for a given angle, it gives more downforce. Mm -hmm. Or um, you can go less angle and have the same downforce as before, so okay. it's got less drag. So still it's a win-win. Still has full air brake functionality. It still has a full air brake um, functionality. There are several positions for the wing, actually. You've got completely flush when the engine bay is cold. Mm -hmm. um, when it gets warm, it'll lift up just to, to allow air to come out. There's some ducts here that are uncovered to pull some more hot air out. Okay. And then if you're in the uh, EB mode, which is essentially the automatic mode, up until 180 km per hour it stays slightly lower than that. And mm -hmm. once you hit 180 it goes into its sort of our mode, which is what it's in now. Okay. All right. And then continuing down, new exhaust system. Significantly more dramatic, but titanium exhaust through, right? Yes, all the way through. And you'll notice there's only four coming out the back because the other two are hiding in the diffuser and they help to blow the air out of the diffuser. Okay, sneaky exhaust tips lurking under the carbon diffuser. I say carbon, everything is carbon, the full body is, it is, is carbon fibre. So continuing around the car, we should talk a little bit about the iconic C-shape. I mean... Yeah, and so this C-shape is the signature of um, Ettore Bugatti. Mm -hmm. um, and it's quite a distinctive shape and it goes through into the inside of the car as well. You have a, yep. a C on the inside. If you walk around though from the back, the first thing you do, you come to the rear uh, brakes and they're 400 millimetres on the rear now, which is what the Veyron had on the front. That's 400 millimetres at the rear. And, and they're and the 420 front. in the front. Okay, so fair so to say, fairly large brakes. They are absolutely massive and, and totally adequate for the job that they're required to do. Um, you've got um, six piston calipers on the rear with two pads in each caliper, and on the front you've got eight piston calipers with four pads in each caliper. And then around the brakes. Yeah, now this, this is a painted design. Uh, this these fins that you see, mm -hmm. they help to um, make turbulence to suck the hot air out. And they're very, okay. very effective. The brakes run at at least 200 degrees cooler. Um, 200 under, degrees cooler? Under hard, heavy okay. use. Um, Just a small number. And I, I'm going to point out at this stage that those front tyres from Michelin are 285 section tyres. Isn't that amazing? 355 at the rear. Yep. Those are uh, some fairly dramatic numbers. They are absolutely massive, and the contact patches have gone up front and rear, more so on the front than the rear, okay. um, to give the car relatively more front grip than it had before um, on Veyron. And I understand they're slightly more reasonable for customers as well. Easier system. Yeah, now because the tyre doesn't have the PAX system, the run flat system okay. anymore, um, so the tyres can be fitted on a, no a more normal machine, so they okay. have to be flown back um, for tyre changes. The other thing to notice on, on this aerodynamic is there's this um, side air curtain, air that comes in at the front there, actually comes out just before the leading edge of the wheel and blows down each side of the car. And at high speed, it helps to stabilise the car. So the car is arrow straight. And the faster you go, the more arrow straight it, it feels. Okay. From and a it, driver's point just of view. what I'm thinking about airflow, the shape of the C very nicely integrates the sort of uh, intake ducts for absolutely. More yeah. So back on in. the top, you've got combustion air. Okay. And then on the bottom, you've got cooling air. Okay. So, and that's split by this this line here. Okay. And we haven't actually yet touched on the front of the car, which typically is the first thing you see when the car's approaching. The iconic Bugatti horseshoe, uh, it's still very much a Bugatti, has resemblance, but the, the shape of the headlights, the eyes of the car is, is very different now. It's very, very distinctive. Um, you have to stare at it a little while to get it, but this is actually a 3D shape. Okay. Um, 3D boxes, yeah. which you can get your yeah. eyes used yeah, to. Yeah, I got it. It's nice um, design. Probably quite hard to show on the camera, but also the uh, the badge on the front. I know that's silver and enamel. The one place where saving some weight not wasn't necessarily number one. It's 155 grams, but makes a statement at the front of the car. Yeah, it's a nice piece. And then on the brake cooling, there's an extra brake cooling duct by the side of the headlight. Okay. Obviously, that's right in the airstream, high pressure air blowing into the brakes. Okay, okay. So the car's sitting in a sort of slightly lower setup right now with the autobahn mode. It is, and in fact, uh, so when you run in the autobahn mode, you're 115 millimeter front rider, mm -hmm. 116 rear, and okay. in autobahn, it goes down to the 95 front, to 115 rear. Yep. There is a stance mode, so that when you stop the car, it goes down to 90, 95, which okay. is the best looking light for pictures. Yes, I can imagine. All right, so well, let's have a quick glance at the interior, if 
if I may. Uh, just pop open the door. So in here, we'll talk more about it while we're driving, uh, but I can see the controls on the steering wheel for the engine start and for the uh, driving modes. Yeah, and the thought here again, following the theme of Veyron in, in some ways, is that it's not fussy. There isn't lots of banks of switches and, mm -hmm. and little screens and things. Pretty much everything is on the steering wheel. At first glance, it might look a little bit complicated, but it's a piece of cake. <laughs> um, the only other switches really, apart from the light switch, uh, are just these um, climate control and heated seat switches. Um, yeah, and I'm gonna show those in a little bit more detail later on as well, because I think they're really rather special. So I think it's probably time to jump in and um, start the car up. Sounds good if, to me. Uh, if that's all right. And we'll have a little listen of uh, what it's like. Naturally, the car is attracting attention back here. Um, it has a keyless system now, so if Andy fires that up. So I can hear there's more grunt than before, there's more grumble and, and roar from the car. Yeah, there really is. It's, it's, um, it's still a very pleasant sound, but it's just a bit more gruff. Yeah, for sure, right. So I should probably come and join you, and we should go for a little ride in the car. And uh, yeah, fair to say, naturally, I'm quite excited about this. We're going to jump inside the Bugatti Chiron, Go and experience what it's like, well firstly from the passenger seat with Andy showing us a little bit more about it before I get an opportunity to jump behind the wheel. So then, in we hop to some nice air conditioning. I can feel that blowing, that's lovely. lovely. Even the air vents are a beautiful sort they of thing. Are, Everyth everything. Yeah. I said we'd talk a bit more about these. Mm. I'm just going to have to show them right now because I love those finish and the way you see the sort of different toggles and, and different dials and you've got well, uh, air direction, I suppose, air conditioning, yep. temperature, um, and heated seats heated down at the seats. bottom. Not very useful today, but can be no, useful. No, we're not. We're definitely not above the uh, above the gear stick. But the thing I know is that if you press and hold this, it brings up that display where you can see the informational peak values. And if the car's been out on a runway, you can see you've used 1,370 horsepower at one point. Not even 1,500, not 234 kilometers. That's a really cool display and the live G readout. Sorry, I'm talking a little bit too much, but I, I'm fascinated by those central components up up through this middle sort of central line. Which... Yeah, they're a quality piece, and actually when you adjust them, they've got a really nice feel to them. Ah, so yeah, it's just that part that moves, not yeah, the front. that's it. Yeah, that's very nice, and that's all part of this line Sorry. that continues and gives us this C throughout the cabin, all the way around the roof, with uh, the toggles for the lights. This lights up as well. Ah, it lights up the whole, the whole bar all the way around. That's pretty neat. It's dim light, I can just see that in the bright sunshine here. And then on the dashboard, just to quickly have a glimpse of this, the uh, speedometer goes up to 500. Yes, yeah. <laughs> it certainly does. So this, this car's limited to uh, 420, sorry. So yeah, so for, for normal use, if it can be called normal. The first uh, speed limiter with only using one key is uh, 380. Mm -hmm. um, I know um, from personal experience on a runway, you can get to 380 by from zero in about 1.9 kilometers. Okay, that's not very um, far. And that, yeah, that's without using launch control, that's just stationary and just going. Okay, and that's, uh, for, for viewers, that's 236 miles per hour. It is. And, and 490 is 261. And it's funny because, um, Quite often you think when you're getting close to VMAX on a car, um, it takes the last little bit takes a little while to get to, doesn't it? Well, yeah. this doesn't. This just climbs just all there. the way to about 379, and then it just goes 380, and it sits there. And it's not a hard limiter, it just sits at 380. Okay. And it's coming at, at it at quite a steep angle. It's really quite amazing. Okay, well, we're not going to be getting to that right now, but we can go out and enjoy what this car is like, so I'm looking forward to this. Should probably seat belt up. Yep. Get ready to head on, uh, head on out, and, and, and see how it, see how it works, what it's like. So, pop first gear, and it moves away so gently and so quietly. It's such a pussycat to drive. Um, so easy. Um, it's happy going slowly. There's no shunting about. But it completely changes its character if you ask it to. If you suddenly just floor the throttle, okay. it's like this massive wild animal. And it knows you're, what you're trying to do. Yeah, and it's funny, you know, it's, it really is more than one car. Because yeah. it, it's a piece of cake to drive in, in traffic. Um, slowly, it's even enjoyable to drive slowly. But then when you get the right piece of road in the right conditions, you can just open it up and it's fantastic. I mean, that's been one of the sort of reputations of the Veyron is how 
if you do just want to drive gently, it's very, very easy and, and forgiving and allows you to. And just sort of, absolutely. as we pull away, it's completely effortless cruising. And there's a gentle murmur. Oh, there's a bit more murmur of the engine. There's a gentle murmur, but very little other noise. It's very little road noise. Yeah, it's very well insulated from all that sound. quietly oozing along. And if we, once we get around the next corner, if we see a piece of straight road, um, we, can, we can sample some of the acceleration. And that's uh, where it's going to be fairly mind-bending. I'm expecting it already, knowing what the, uh, the Veyron was like. So we're still, we're in the standard driving mode at the moment, right? So we're, we're, in, in a, we're actually in autobahn. We're in autobahn, okay, right. so that's, yeah. that's sort of turned it up slightly. And it's, it would change into autobahn mode itself when it reaches 180, so. Okay, I'm just preempting that now. I don't think this bit's very straight, but what you can get from this is how how it flows so it's mm -hmm. so agile in the corners. Um, and straight away when you turn, you get that feeling immediately where the front wheels are. And the communication comes back through the steering wheel. So this is autobahn mode. You've got, let me get this right, the different sort of driving modes. You've got EB mode, that's the standard comfort, highest normal yep. driving mode. And that's also everything automatic. So okay. you can carry on in EB mode until you reach 180 and then it will switch automatically into autobahn mode, which drops the rear one millimeter, okay. the front 20 millimeters. And, and that's what we're in right now. I'm, for, for me, because I've driven lots of uh, fast cars, but I've also raced a lot of different cars, cars with big horsepower, um, lightweight cars nothing can accelerate as fast as this can. And I think because most of the other cars I've driven are all traction limited in the end. And so to actually have this 100% traction, and all that power and all that torque going down onto the road, it's, it is addictive, I have to say. Mm, so sure. you wait till we change places. I'm, I'm looking forward to, uh, to it. <laughs> you're, you know, you're, you're just, it's the control that you have. This feeling that the car is gonna respond to what you want. Yeah. Um, so, some of these corners now are a little bit twisty, but as soon as you turn, this is the feeling you'll get. The moment you turn the wheel, this communication comes back to you so quickly, and I think it's really important because that's the bit where most of the information is coming through. And if there's any disconnection between the road and you, you don't know where you are. And yeah. This is lightning quick and very accurate. Just going back a little bit to the driving modes, we have EB Autobahn. Sportier would be handling mode, right? Yes, yeah, so we, the final mode is this, uh, yeah, I mean, if you go into the handling mode or the race mode, um, then you've got um, stiffer suspension again, more downforce, um, and the stability control is turned down to a very low level. Okay. Um, and it's really designed for if you're on track. Um, yeah. I don't, on, on the road, I think uh, autobahn mode is, is perfect. Yeah. Now, talking of autobahn mode, here is a little bit of autobahn okay. coming up. And Maybe we just give it a quick blast if there's nobody there. For uh, sure. Because there's no speed limit on this uh, road. De-restricted autobahn in Germany. Just bleeds and 
rags to speed off. That was 363. That took what? Just a few seconds of full throttle? Yeah, I'm, I'm just thinking about this. 363 kilometers an hour might be perhaps the fastest I've ever been in a car. Oh, that would be good. And it was done um, just like that. We had some cars ahead and I didn't want to buzz no, the cars. No, sure, not, not at that speed. But I mean, another two, three seconds you'd have been on the speed limiter. So yes. how many seconds was that? It's very few seconds needed to go on the speed limiter. That's what I find unbelievable. This is, I, I, I am speechless, <laughs> utterly speechless. Goodness me. And now we're doing 125. It's just a really refined, beautiful place to sit. Gentle and comfortable. Transforms. Uh, yeah. You see what I mean about this whole, it's two different cars in one? Yeah. Because um, you can sit in this car quite comfortably for hours on end. And you can do that when, when the time's right. <laughs> yeah. so, I've gone completely quiet. I'm completely, I, I'm completely gobsmacked by how effortlessly quick the speed built up. Just in an undramatic way, it. but in such a reassuring way, even from the passenger seat, the car felt planted and no elements of uncertainty. I think the trick is, because you saw that wasn't also not very straight, we had to be turning. Mm -hmm. The trick is, is when you, as a driver, if you put a small input into the steering wheel, your brain is expecting a certain reaction to that. Mm -hmm. And the moment that it doesn't match your expectation, that's when you freak out and you don't know where you are. Yes. So I just wanted to, to change direction a little bit then. As soon as I put the input in, I had the, immediately the signal come back, yep, everything's fine. The car doesn't go light at speed. It doesn't go particularly heavy either. It just feels bolted down yeah. all the time. Wow. So, I'm a little bit speechless. Well, I'm glad. <laughs> sat in the passenger seat it's everything's so beautiful to look at and it's, it's comfortable I would definitely argue it's more comfortable than my experience of the Veyron um, yeah I mean a lot of work has been done on the on suspension um, and it, you know we are effectively from the beginning of Veyron to the beginning of Chiron we're effectively 12 years and all um, yeah so a lot of things have changed uh, since then so we need to find a good spot to plug you in the yeah. taxi, don't we? Um, Are you sure? Yeah, you'll, you'll, uh, you'll love it. Excitement level overload. Um, fair to say I'm looking forward to, uh, looking forward to this one, seeing what this is going to be like from the other side of the car. Okay then, here we are. Driver's seat and I'm sort of getting in delicately. So, feels like a special place. I like how you have a Tory Bugatti signature on the uh, on the display and the picture of the Chiron on the other side. And you so. know what? Every time I sit in the car, if I've got some downtime, I keep finding little bits of detail that I didn't spot the first time. Yeah, you know, I can imagine things. Yeah. Small things. Well, every single thing in here has been thought about. But the engine button's right there. So let's. Okay, and there we go. It comes to life. Digital sweep. Okay, <laughs> I'm just like looking around, taking this in and uh, thinking for, for a moment about what I'm looking at. So we start by default in EB mode um, or in the mode you were last in. We're I actually, see yeah, yeah. it's a mark, we're in so we should probably start in there and you get a graphical representation on the screen. And if you see next to the total kilometres, there's a yeah. small graphic Okay, yeah. Uh, to tell you which mode you're in. And this car has currently done 22,220 kilometres. And I have to say, all of those, or most of those, have been spent over 300 kilometres an hour. Yes. Okay, so it's been well tested, and in two kilometres time, it's going to have done 22,222. So that's a bit of fun. Right, so to get moving. So take, if you want drive, yeah, across to the right. Select drive. And it's ready, it's ready to pull away and, and start driving. So, just like any car, right? Off we go. Pulls away gently. Effortless and easy. Steering wheel just gentle. This is where you feel like you could almost be driving in literally any car. It just drives completely normally. It doesn't ask anything of you more than a normal car, does it? No, and it feels it's, it's easy to see around you, you can see everything. I love the rear view mirror view through the sea, through the sea and the wing up behind. But just simple cruising, seventh gear, no stress, seven speed double clutch with the pedals on the back of the steering wheel. Gearbox quick to respond. 
calmed down some years. And then the noise of it, as you hear it sort of spooling up behind you, and that's just gentle little touches, just to sort of experience this. So much torque in seventh gear. Just give it a little sort of push, gentle push. Incredible, isn't it? I mean, if you put it into, uh, say, fourth, yeah. and you get some space, and just hold the throttle down. If I'm brave enough to just hold the throttle. Well, you'll get the small delay, and as soon as you've got those, look at that. Whoa! That's fourth gear, and you're crushed into the back of the seat. Yeah, and that was me being fairly gentle with it. That wasn't a full on fourth gear. Wow. About the steering as you turn, yeah, you know, exactly. it sits so flat. Yeah. Oh, it takes your breath away the way it just picks up. Wow, back to the Nurburgring. So, a very sort of clear press when you, when you press the paddle, but yeah, it's very positive, isn't it? You know where you are. Just I mean, I think the thing that's, I guess, almost the sort of immediate surprise is that the, the Veyron felt like a car that you knew had the capabilities but was easy and gentle to drive, but this feels even more so. This feels like both extremes have, have exaggerated, and it's it's more towards gentle on one side, but even more towards dramatic on the other side, based on 363 kilometres per hour. In just a short time. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. you're going until you look behind you and realise how far behind everything is. Okay, so let's just try this. Down into first gear and foot flat. And away it goes, it just picks up and it launches you. And the, the rate of acceleration is so ferocious. It's, but in a, in a gentle way, that's like, yeah. your faces and your internals are thinking, what on earth is happening to me? And it's relentless, isn't it? And it just, you don't it feel just it keeps, off. keeps going. <laughs> How do you put this into words? I, I don't even know. Oh, uh, it's difficult. But it's also fair to say that it's not a one-dimensional car. It's not a point and square straight line car. Uh -huh. As you go through all these flowing corners, that communication, I, I, uh -huh. I really think that's amazing. It just feels refined and collected in the way the pet does it. It's, to describe the car as it's... But it's not you, because you're not the only one who's had the same No, problem. I can imagine. <laughs> your mind, you're not, if you're not used to that, the, the rate at which you, you move on, it just makes you have to stop. You can't think about it. Yeah. Watching everything around you. And it's not at all hard to drive it. You feel like you can completely position the car on the road, and it's quite wide, but it doesn't feel awkwardly wide. I mean, it must be wider than some cars that are substantially harder to see out of and substantially harder to place on the road accurately. But I, it's like, dare I say it, it's, as, it's almost as drivable as a Golf or something. It's You can jump in and drive it, but then you accelerate like that in a way that no other road car comes close. Nothing with a number plate can do that. Don't, don't you find with some fast cars, it's, when you go faster, you can enjoy them. But yeah. then, when you've got to get to your favourite piece of road, you drive normal speed. And they start screaming to be okay. driving faster, and, and they're just awkward and clunky. There and you go. This you could drive at any speed to your favourite piece of road, and you, you'd enjoy that bit. Yeah, and when you, when you get there, it's just monumental. And I mean, Germany is one place where you can enjoy it, the autobahns. I think just the quality of German roads in general. I mean, yes, this, this is a lovely road, isn't it? Smooth it's and comfortable. And we're, we're still in EV mode as well, so when we put it into autobahn mode, it, it lowers the ride slightly. It lowers it, it puts more rake on, stiffens the suspension a little bit, mm -hmm. and you get, you 
definitely get a little bit more control if you're going quickly through a series of corners. Okay, you can feel though that it's a little bit more aggressive. I mean, it's still very smooth, but it's a little bit bumpier than it was before. It's just a lovely place to sit, isn't it? It's a really lovely place to sit, and that is one of the craziest things I think about this, is that it doesn't feel uncomfortable or impractical. It has that phenomenal capability of still being so civilized, so gentle and nice, and just the feel of everything and the look of everything, and the, I mean, the, the finish in the sky with all the satin carbon fiber through the whole sort of central console area. These kind of roads, yeah, should, should go be back into the yeah, slightly softer. That's it, and it's very easy to toggle that right there at your fingertips. Yeah, it's a nice action, isn't it? Well, you don't have to even take your hand off the wheel, you can just do it with your thumb. And also, the lift mode is quite nice because you turn it into the lift mode and it will sprint back to EB, okay, you can lift the car, and then of course, at 50, it goes back down automatically. Okay, so you get okay, that makes sense. And as soon as you get out of the village, you can uh, pop it back into auto barn mode. hard or crazy is uh, just thinking about the numbers. Not to 100 kilometers an hour is two point, under 2.5 seconds. Not to 200 kilometers an hour is under 6.5 seconds. That's right. And not to 300 is 13 and a half? Yep. 13 and a half seconds. I think my first car did not to 100 kilometers an hour in 13.5. Wow. And this is getting to triple that speed in the same amount of time. Yeah. And we haven't fully figured um, everything yet. So it'd be interesting when the real numbers are what it's completely capable of. My goodness. I feel like speechless. Well, I've, I've said I'm speechless far too many times. I'm clearly not speechless because I've got the words <laughs> to say I'm speechless. But it's... Uh, it's a... I tell you what I, I'm impressed with um, is that I've done now quite a few test drives with different customers. And quite often, some of the customers already have a Ferrari P1918. Yeah. And the thought pattern before driving the car is, well, what can this give us or give me that I don't already have? And then okay. after a test drive, and I think these people are the people who can really judge because they actually live with those other yeah, cars they use they out. They'll come back and they'll say, you know what, this is something different. This is giving me more. And that's nice to hear. It's a completely different drive. I mean, you have sort of stripped out race cars with huge performance figures behind them. But this isn't that. This is the, the almost every day, isn't it? It's literally. Yeah. So one of the things with the car is the stiffness of it. And you can feel that it's just completely solid and rigid. It's, it's the official number 50,000 Newton meters. Which has Newton meters per degree. Per degree. Um, which is race car territory. It's, yeah, it's LMP1. LMP1 territory. territory. Well, that's, that's, that's good enough race car for me. <laughs> yeah. But then bumpy road, so this is where we can put it in softer suspension mode. It takes a few seconds because it has to do the wing and the ride height as well. Yeah. And then, uh, but this is a really bumpy road. It is. But it's not too crazy. There we go. Okay. There's no jarring. No. Needless to say, that was pretty epic. So thank you very, very much. That was brilliant fun. Well, it's a lovely day today, gorgeous day. Um, sunshine here, out in force. But while we're parked up, I wanted to have a little bit more of a look at the uh, dashboard and the driver instruments. And I can't get my head around how that central speed uh, speedo goes up to 500 kilometers an hour. Yeah, and the thinking behind that was um, not the 500 part, but the it's a it's like a an expensive jewel in the middle of mm -hmm. the dashboard. And a lot of supercars will put the tacker in the centre, yeah. as you would have in a race car. But really and truly, with this car, it doesn't actually matter how many revs you're, you're turning the engine yeah. because the power's there all the time. So this is a central instrument. Also, when people peer in through the side window to look inside, quite often with a modern car, you've just got a black screen. Okay, yes. Well, now when you peer through, you see the 500 kilometers an hour top speed. Which is really rather striking. And that's surrounded by the two digital displays. So on the right hand side you have your infotainment display um, which is controlled I guess through the toggle here on the right side so the menu back and then going through the mode so just quickly to show this if we go into navigation you can see we've got it set I can zoom that out that's back to the Nürburgring so you have the nav on the right hand side. Are there any trick features in here things we can load up? 
some of the car info. Car info is good always. And I suppose this is where you can see the oil and water temperatures, which basically always hover the same. They, yeah, I mean, if, if you're really, really pushing hard on the track, you can get the oil up to just over 100, but that's nothing um, for a modern synthetic oil. Mm -hmm. uh, that's your how many kilometres to go before the yeah. tank's empty, 270, etc. Um, if you toggle down, you go through other menus as well. On the ah, side. yes, You've okay. Got, yeah, consumption speed. Um, maximum speed, there's those maximum horsepower. Speed. And so. Journey okay. driven, battery. Battery voltage, yeah. Back to the information. And then on the left side of the screen is where you have the uh, digital uh, rev count up around the outside. And you can... Ah, oh, you can have a live rev, so if I... Uh, yeah, you can have... So you've got, you've got revs of power. I go back to... Uh, okay, there's... The rev. That's, that's quite neat. And the power gauge. Ah, yes, okay, I see. And then your phone controls. And my favourite one, just because mm -hmm. of all my racing experiences. Tires are everything. Yeah. Um, what it's showing there, the white values are the actual tire pressures. Mm -hmm. And the blue values are the expected pressures. And that does a calculation from cold cold to hot pressure. Oh, okay. So it sort of tracks what it's gone up to as you've been driving. That's it. Um, but then as soon as you roll, and you can probably show that, you need your seatbelt to roll, but as soon as you roll, the blue one changes to temperature. Okay. Let's just I think try this just for a moment. Cool. So. Uh, Drive, park, brake. You've oh. got off automatically. And so start, start rolling. rolling. There we go, and it goes up to temperatures. It just starts showing us our temperatures. Yeah. Okay, back to a stop and it will recalculate. And I've noticed that the happy number um, for temperatures, if you have a minimum of 25, you will have 100% mm -hmm. traction in first gear, even on a okay. not perfect road. Right. So I use that, that gauge quite a lot. That is one of the mesmerizing things. And I haven't talked about it yet, but there's an LC button there. LC probably stands for launch control. It does, and um, if you're not satisfied with the acceleration the way it is, you can always make it more exciting. Yeah, I'm not sure it needs it. <laughs> I guess you put it in handling mode or race mode, and then press launch. Put on the brake accelerator, let go of the brake, That's a, and an then you're, uh, you can't talk anymore because your face has been reformed to the back of the seat. <laughs> and it's interesting because you, you build boost before you lift the brake off. So yeah. in fact, you do get a little bit of slip because that's the most efficient way to, to leave. Uh, and by the time you get to second gear, the slip's all finished. Okay, so while we're still in here, I'm just going to quickly open the door just so I can show the uh, toggles for the mirrors. Um, you've got a nice carbon storage bucket here, which is quite neat. Um, pocket big enough for a, a drinks bottle. And then down here, I'm going to show you guys this. Um, you've got the electronic handbrake, the memory seat controls, your manual seat controls, and lumbar and those sort of components because luxury car. And then here is a speed key. So the speed key used to be kept independently of the car, but you can now take it out. And this literally is the key, which when you put it in, unlocks VMAX mode and lets you go up to 420 kilometers an hour on this car. Um, it's held in really neatly by a magnet in there sits in place just to have that separate driving mode which is uh, quite nice so I think probably sadly it's time for me to uh, press the off button the uh, moments I never want to happen but it just switches off and the fans cease immediately yeah, they, don't they don't run off to silence so it keeps itself cool the whole time so that there's no stress there well this has been amazing so Huge thanks for well, the experience. Thank you. It's been I brilliant. I loved every minute of it. Um, and for those who have been watching for a while, Andy and I shot a video with the Veyron Supersport and with the Vitesse WRC a couple of years ago. So this has topped even that experience, which has just been just been mega. Wow, so thank you very much. Pleasure. If you like the numbers behind the Chiron, let's just give you a number about the tyres. So when you're driving at 420 kilometres an hour, something that is this far away from the central axle point weighs 3,000 times its normal weight. Something at the edge of the tyre weighs 3,800 times. So one gram of tyre weighs 3,800 grams when you're driving at that speed. Now, inside here, you have the 44 gram tyre pressure sensor. At 420 kilometers an hour, that weighs 132 kilos with the G-forces on it. That's quite an impressive number. Another thing I want to show you quickly is the luggage storage in the front. Now, the Veyron never had a huge amount of space, but in here, if we come around, 
and open up the uh, front compartment, which is fantastically light, you actually have an area that can store a sort of standard carry-on flight bag. So 44 litres, normal sort of luggage size of what can be taken on, the, uh, on an aeroplane. So you could get away for a weekend with that and then closing this back down because of the speed it's capable of. And um, you have to latch it sort of like this, putting your fingers underneath the uh, horseshoe grill to make sure you get a good hold of it. Um, and solidify the latch, I suppose you could say. But, wow, my word, this has been the most amazing of experiences. This is the next generation of hypercar. There is nothing, I think, that sort of touches this in terms of the engineering scale, the reliability of it, the, the way it's put together and the way it feels, the luxuriousness, yet combining that with the capabilities and the performance. So I'm going to have to take a while to kind of reflect on this day and take in that experience and driving in the Bugatti Chiron. I, how, you know, like this is, this is it. This is, I guess, the sort of icon of this generation now, this decade, this period. And wow, well, 500 cars in total um, that are going to be made, about 250 of them already spoken for, carries a price tag of two and a half million pounds if you pay the VAT, 2.1 uh, plus VAT, so 2.5 million pounds, but huge amounts of configuration, carbon fibre, visual carbon that you can have um, over the car, or the dual tone approach like this car with the sort of painted section and the carbon section, or you can have different painted sections, and obviously lots and lots of options, different sort of seat options, um, pretty much everything you want you can have on the Chiron. So, my goodness, I hope you've enjoyed the video. A huge thanks to Andy for going so in depth with us and allowing us to sort of learn and see so much about the car. This has been a monumental day. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video and I will catch up with you again very soon. Cheers.